Welcome to the Impact Wrestling Post Show. I'm Tom Hannafin, joined by the drama king, Matthew Raywall. It was another jam-packed night on Access TV. So much to get to, especially the Knockouts World Title match that went down between Deanna Perrazzo and Taylor Wilde. But first, I want to touch on the scene that we saw with the new Impact World Champion, Steve Macklin. We know that come under siege, he will have his first defense of his Impact World Championship against PCO, and it appears Macklin is prepared to put a lot between himself and PCO. Oh, I mean, it feels like he's bringing mercenaries from every corner, every nook and cranny. And tonight, we saw that take form in the way of Champagne Singh and Shira now doing the bidding of Macklin. Yeah, it appears Steve Macklin, like he did with the changing of the guard ceremony, trying to put his private security force between himself and Scott Demore, is happy to make sure PCO's uh, ascent is slowed in some capacity before their battle at Under Siege. But this was an interesting night. Remember last week we got to learn a little bit more about Nick Aldis and what he's doing here in Impact Wrestling? Well, this earlier tonight on Access TV, Frankie Kazarian sat down to share what his early days in Impact Wrestling were all about. Honestly, I was having the time of my life. That's all I ever wanted to do. But I was wrestling against some of the most incredible talents in the world. Guys like Chris Saban, The Amazing Red, Jerry Lynn, one of my heroes, one of my mentors, Low Key, Christopher Daniels. I got, I got put in a world title match with AJ Styles a month into being here. I felt pressure then. World title match, I'm brand new to this place. However, I saw a lot of nastiness. I saw a lot of ugliness. I saw the dirty business side of this creeping into what I loved. And it begins to take a toll on you. This business takes a toll on you physically, but it takes way, way more of a toll on you emotionally. So clearly a lot of positive, but also a lot of negative. So let's fast forward. What led to you leaving TNA in 2014? I had multiple X Division title reigns, multiple tag team title reigns. I was in so many first dubs, first King of the Mountain X Division match, first Terra Dome match, all, all these. I just, I did so many cool things. And, uh, you know, it's no secret that things were kind of topsy turvy in the world of this company. Management was constantly rolling over, constantly changing. The regime in at the time made no bones about it. They didn't care for what I was doing, they didn't care for what Chris Daniels was doing, who was my tag team partner at the time no plans, you're pushed aside, pushed aside, pushed aside. And honestly, I felt at that time disrespected for what I had given this company to just be shoved aside, shoved aside, shoved aside. It was time to go and my contract was coming up. And at that time, both sides thought the best thing I could do would be to walk away. And that's exactly what I did. Fight back, then attack. Never let your guard down. May 26th on Fight, the assault continues mercilessly and with extreme malice. This world is not for the weak. This world is meant for those who were born to conquer. Impact Wrestling presents Under Siege, live May 26th on Impact Plus and Fight. Welcome back to Ringside here inside the Rebel in Toronto. We just saw moments ago Frankie Kazarian sitting down being very honest about his early days, the mix of veterans and newcomers here in Impact Wrestling. Yeah, I mean, it, it was a very harrowing experience for Frankie Kazarian. You know, he had a lot. He was trying to prove to the entire world to professional wrestling, especially here at Impact Wrestling. And, and a lot of the people that he, he ran across, so many incredible influences, but also some of the tough things he had to go through to get where he wanted to be. Yeah, Frankie Kazarian, we understand we're going to learn more about about him next week in this exclusive interview series. Frankie Kazarian is on a mission here in Impact Wrestling. But right now I want to turn our attention to our main event that we saw earlier on tonight here on Access TV. The first defense in the new age of the Virtuoso. I know you're thrilled to see it. The brand new Impact Knockouts World Champion, Deanna Perrazzo, defending her championship against one half of the Knockouts World Tag Team Champions. Taylor Wilde, a first time ever matchup, a meeting of the generations. That's right, you know, Taylor Wilde was trying to usurp the champ champ, you know, trying to make herself a champ champ. And you don't beat that, you don't do that very easily. Deanna Perrazzo is here to prove a point in this third reign as Impact Knockouts World Champion. And oh my God, that night, I, I'm just gonna gush back again, that night at Rebellion, what a crowning moment. Again, no stranger to gold, but this one, this one feels different. I feel like she has something more to prove 
something more than, than the attitude we've seen from her in previous generations. I think she's on a new path and she's going to make her greatest reign yet as world champion. And very much like we talked about how Steve Macklin, the new Impact World Champion, is a huge target on his back. The same goes for Deanna Perrazzo, now holding the Impact Knockouts World Championship. She's no saint. She has made enemies over the years. She doesn't have a ton of and allies apologizing for it. here in Impact Wrestling. So just like we know that it's going to be Macklin and PCO for the Impact World title at Under Siege, now we have to see how things unfold for the Virtuoso with Under Siege coming up on Friday, May 26. It'll be live on Impact Plus, Fight TV, and YouTube for our Ultimate Insiders in London, Ontario, Canada. I cannot wait to get to that night. Final thoughts on this evening, especially in regards to this, this what feels like a new era for Impact Wrestling following I mean, the rebellion. Absolutely, rebellion saw so much concluded, so much coming to a head, and now it is like a rebirth for so much of the roster. A fresh start for everybody, new champions, new eras for everybody. I can't wait to see what's next for Impact. And I know you can't wait because next week Impact Wrestling will be in Chicago. You're going to love it. Oh, can I come absolutely. Over? I mean, yeah, of course. Well, why are these losers still here, by the way? You know, they're not nearly as cool as the people in Chicago. I mean, obviously, maybe they're hanging around to get an autograph from me. Thank you for joining you us here the on the Impact Hannafin. Wrestling Post Show. He's really on Hannafin. Thank you very much. We'll see you next week.